Just talk about it. Nothing, what does he say? Nothing like a good sit. <laughs> Especially when you've been on your feet yeah, you've been standing a lot. For a while. Yeah. yeah. I broke the number one rule from Scott, the key grip from years ago. He's like, always change your shoes. <laughs> always bring two sets of shoes with you. At lunch, you change your shoes or your feet are going to hurt. And I'm like, I only brought one pair of shoes. I haven't done that in years. Rookie move. Yeah, very rookie. It was very rookie. Would you, you like one of mine? change your shoes. <laughs> I was like, something's that looks, happening looks like over we here. we had the same size. It's got a Dr. Scholl's in there, too. Oh, that's <laughs> perfect. No, I'll just take the sole out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll just rip. The, there you go. Oh, oh, nice. oh, 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 oh. Vintage. Oh. Put that back in. Put that, put that back in. <laughs> the oh, holes, we're just going to put that the away. The holes have, have split. <laughs> yeah. It's gone beyond it holes. It did not go back it's in right now. It's gone beyond holes. holes. There we go. Is this, this is just to go into the camera, right? The, I shouldn't be, there's no speaker, right? This is just a camera mic? Or is I don't know. It actually? sounds a little, sounds, uh, yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, there yeah. we, we go. go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay, now I know. Who Are gave we, him a mic? I think Who we're waiting it? for a few more people to trickle Excellent. in here. Everyone, this is we're how good. I sip coffee. It's a Starbucks, just so a, you, got, you just, gotta look bougie when you drink the Starbucks. Yeah, like, so. The whole point of ASMR is get closer to the mic, too. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, I guess I, we're gonna get started uh, here. Uh, I hope that was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was. I just started, there's so much left of this venti. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Cake 2023. <laughs> I'm Vic. This is Trip Fresh Mornings with Vic and Trip, and this is Cairo. Fresh afternoons. How's it going? Thank you for being here. Let's give a round of applause for our guests here, Margot and Cooper. Ow! 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 So first, 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 before any questions, I really have to hear you say the word with French fries, cheese, and gravy. <gasps> She's been going about this for weeks, man. <laughs> oh, because I say it, we're done. I'm, I say poutine. I say poutine, too. But then everyone was like, oh, have you had poutine? <laughs> so the people Russian? in Cornwall, we say it the, the French way, no? Am I put, putin? Putin. Putin. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> you see, it's not the French way unless you spit in someone's face when you say it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, so, poutine. Yeah, it's poutine. There we go. Poutine. It's like a, it's like a uh, poutine. How do, you, how, do you, yeah. how do you say R O U T I N E? What? Routine. 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 Okay. Routine. But routine is an English word. I mean, poutine. once it has, once they put like English letters in there, it becomes American. <laughs> Here's, how you, Such an American. American Here's how you speak American. Here's how you speak United States of American. <laughs> However we feel like. <laughs> wait, wait. Can I just hear you say sorry? Oh yeah, sorry. 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 I say sorry. 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 Well, how do I sorry. say sorry? I never apologize. I never apologize. So. Take it from oh. the Canadians. It's, it's a weird it's word a, in general. Yeah, 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 sorry. We use sorry? that Sorry? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, speaking of which, being here in Canada, do you find a difference in the politeness? I have to ask, because... Like whenever you're in the States versus when you're in Canada, because apparently Canadians are so nice and polite. It's That's what I hear. It's very, uh, it's, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done talking now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I keep no, interrupting. You're not. I'm an interrupter. I'm just an interrupter. tell us how nice we are. Yeah, no, no, I mean, we're from the South, so. Southerners, so nice are, Southerners are pretty nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah so thank you yeah. for having us, everyone. Yeah. For your kindness yeah. and letting thank us you, be thank here. You, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. That's, like we just threw down the first thank yous. <laughs> Shall we open it up to the audience? Sure. Oh, has anyone got any I questions? I was going to say, though, but to that, I was yes. going to say, yeah, you know, it's also like a, I don't know if it's like a northern thing also, because I see this a little bit in like our, you know, Michigan Midwest. It's also just a very earnest, um, it's, a, it's very earnest. So like, it's very like honest. You mean here? Yeah. yeah. So like, it's a, it's a lot of like people asking about your day, and then actually like they mean it. They mean it. So it's yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's because it can get so cold here that no one wants to keep <laughs> moving quickly. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. Whoo. So what else is new? I'm like, oh well, <laughs> you know, that's that could be it. Like you know. still care. And the South, it's so hot, we don't want to go sweating. So we're like, yeah. So that's some fine lemonade you got back there. That's. 
<laughs> Great ass tea. Yeah, thank you guys. When's so, the last time someone said that to you? Which? That's, that's some fine lemonade you got there. <laughs> no, well, you know, that's true. No one says it like that. Nobody says it like that. I said it, that. it to Aubin, though, because my wife makes really good lemonade. <laughs> she takes the lemons, she chops up the lemons, and then puts you know a bunch of sugar and then leaves them in a jar Ooh. and then it stays that way for like, it's like three weeks them. like yeah. three weeks or so and then you have like this syrup and then you put that in your in your water wow. and then and if you put it in a lemon water already that's gonna be better and then you just take this syrupy lemon and you can eat the lemons and it's but yeah, this it's down. Did, did you bring yeah, it? We're getting a secret yeah. recipe. Did you bring right us now. some? Huh? I can make it. It's a mighty fine lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to come I back in a month. I can only see your face on the can, and that's the name of the brand. Yes. Mighty fine lemonade. <laughs> mighty fine. Yeah, that's, mighty. Like, that's good marketing right yeah, there. Yeah, it really like is. Mighty fine. We'll mighty fine. It's, it's delicious. It's All awesome. right. So, who? anybody want to start? First question from the crowd. Go ahead. We don't bite. Uh, so my question is, uh, well, for you, uh, Cooper, and it is, uh, what is it like working with Warner Bros? Oh, they're cool dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Both Warner Brothers are very nice. They're very, uh, <laughs> they they give good eye contact whenever they're talking with us about. No, I mean it's. Um, yeah, I guess I've done a few things with them. Uh, no, it's fun. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. In my mind, I'm like, is it Warner Brothers that did it? Or is it New Line Cinemas or that did it? I never, you know, I mean, I'm like one of the bad actors that I like, I don't learn the names you of show like up. the casting directors or the, I mean, I know them eventually, but like, I'm not, I, I, I like, oh, those are the bosses of whoever. And usually when I'm in it, I'm like, that's me, the actors. When I'm on set, I like being with the crew, but I, I I normally just hang out with the actors. But I like I like Warner Brothers for the fact that they hired so many nice, friendly actors. I mean that too. That's a very <laughs> that sounds so lame, but I, I do enjoy the people I work with. <laughs> Another question? It could be do because you have any meals? Uh, no, that's it. All right, that's thank it. you. If you do the uh, if you, whenever you wear the the Charlie Cox glasses. You always have to just look like kind of off at somebody. Don't yeah. quite be <laughs> eye contact. Yeah. And how's he do? Yeah, foggy. Yeah, foggy. Yeah. That foggy. was good. That was yeah. good. Yeah. Was it? Nice. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Nailed now it. I feel like you're listening to me, Nailed but it. you're yeah. not also seeing yeah. me. Yeah. Over here, man. <laughs> that lawyer is so rude. <laughs> Anyone else want to come up next? Because we've we've got a couple things, I think. I yeah, have prepared I have. a few for both of you. We. Ooh. Yay. We, we, we. Cooper Andrews, I've seen your backyard. Yes. During an interview, you shared a glimpse of your Georgia backyard, and it looks oh, very it nice like, and very what? peaceful. <laughs> yeah. It is. The sugar in the honey um, hummingbird feeder, though, a little, little sweet, a little, little less. But anyways, well, what is, is it about there the... There is a hummingbird uh, feeder back there. What is it about the countryside that attracted you <laughs> out there? And part B to the question, if you had to live in a big city, where would you live based on the tastiest sandwich you ever ate? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, this is a two-parter. Oh yeah. All right. You want One, part three? I like. I like. Well, I've always liked being uh, sort of away, but it's funny because the front of my house is very suburbia. So I live like on the end of a cul-de-sac. I had no no clue, but when I went into the backyard, I'm like, this is the backyard. Yeah. This is. I didn't even care. Like they're like, oh, well, the driveway is really steep. I don't care about that. I can knock down this whole house if I can keep this whole backyard. But. Um, I think okay, so I'm a I, I, I like sound. I'm a I'm a sound person. Um, I you know my uncle is way more particular than I am. I have to like you can't play uh, cell phone audio in front of my uncle without him freaking out. You must. It has to be turned off. That is too loud. That it t sounds terrible. And it's like he because of the it's compressed. You know, and even when you're listening to like really good music, really good audio, and it was recorded great, and whatever the speakers are, it just won't beat like the sound of like you know, water rushing through and like, you know, like trees swaying and then whatever that like midnight critter is. Cause I'll be, it's like 2 a.m. It'll be, it was like- For a, us, probably frogs or- Yeah, in this case- Out, out in the honestly, country here, it's this, fishers. This was a possum. 
This one was a possum What's that just a likes fisher? to. Yeah, what is it? They're a very fisher. cute and vicious. It's, it's a yeah. vicious, like, what is it, like a cat like? It kind of looks like a big cat. It's like, like yeah, like a, it looks like almost like a big cat, but it's like vicious, like a coyote vicious. Oh, so like, like a bobcat, like a mountain they, lion. Am I right here? Right? Okay. I've never yeah. seen yeah. one. Like I've never seen one in person. Like there's like a, we have like lynx, mountain fisher. lions, bobcats. Oh, yes. But they hang out in the country and in the middle of the night they scream. Uh, oh, that's just. Oh, a gentle yeah. <laughs> They, they sound kind of like the wraiths in Lord of the Rings, like, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but they're cute. And they're, they're like, vicious. You don't want to go near. They're like sure. hyena squirrels. Yeah. Ooh, okay, just, I like that. Look at those cute little paws. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you don't want to go near them. That will, tear, that will tear your flesh. Yes, yeah. yes. The cute little paws that yeah, will tear a, you apart. We get a bunch of coyote that, that go into the back. We're not the, across the creek. So I'll hear like eight to ten coyote like howling every few nights. And I'm like, they killed something. And uh, based off of a sandwich, which city? Mm. Damn. Uh, I mean, it would have. I mean, Cat's Deli, New York, has like my favorite Reuben. Mm. Um, Margo's had better food than I've had though. And He's never had a sandwich Reuben's from Riley's Bakery. What are those sandwiches? Paris is cool, but I wonder how Seoul is. Seoul, I didn't do any sandwiches there. They don't. I mean, I get I mean, like they, the bao buns. They'll have bao buns, but I, I was eating like kimchi everything, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not a. Uh, I don't like pickled things, but there's something about kimchi. Yeah. Well, I mean, when your wife is like sneaking it into every single thing, you eventually start start liking getting it acquired. It. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I guess I like acquired kimchi. Taste. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be the. But yeah, I would love to live in Korea though. That'd be a fun one. <laughs> Canada. I don't know if I ate sandwiches here, really. I always ate, I never ate anything small here. That's for sure. Like Toronto, we, we shot the first Shazam in Toronto. I'm trying to think of like the smallest thing I ate. <laughs> Cause like nothing was small. Pittsburgh there, has a good sandwich. Pittsburgh does have a good sandwich, but I didn't have it. I had the one that your mom you're was gonna, like. You're gonna have it one day. Okay, good. Cause your mom was like, oh, you didn't have that, did you? Mm. And I was like, okay, good, because I felt bad that that was the, and then she's like, there are better places, and I was like, all right. Yeah, I'll Pittsburgh go. is known, where I'm from, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we're known for, like, this restaurant called the Primani Brothers, and anybody that says it differently, you know that they're not from Pittsburgh, so... Everybody learn. What is it? Permani right, you, brothers. You got a twin. Permani. 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 Because okay. people outside of town, they say Permanti. They make it sound like a royal thing. And it's like, we're just like, that's like drunk food, you know? That's, <laughs> that's like, like, you know, it's like a poutine. I, or, you know, like it's like a. Or people who say Toronto. A Toronto. Yeah. Toronto. Me. I'm Toronto. not certain. I, I saw an interview. Toronto. Toronto. There is Permani. only one. You know, like, you just gotta only kind of run two. it together. It's just I, like, for me. Sure, I saw an interview with you where you were trying yeah. to pronounce this exact place that she's mentioning right now. Yeah, per. <laughs> well, <'cause laughs> or Permon Permonti. I it's, always, per, it's just Permani. Permani. It's Permani. Permani. It's like, right. lose the T. It's Permani. It's like, Toronto. Permani. Toronto. It's like, Toronto. 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 Oh, you're from Toronto? But it's like these two <laughs> big pieces of slices of bread and then whatever you want inside. And then they put fries on top oh, and sold. then they put grass, which which is grass? coleslaw. Oh, grass. Grass. They call it grass and fries. And then you slap it on and it's a permani sandwich. So grass, coleslaw. Yep. Uh, I know a few people around this area who call asparagus grass. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> You're like, but oh I'm God. like, I love the difference in like grass is cool. Yeah. We call it slaw. Slaw. I mean, most slaw. people most people call it slaw, but for some reason they call it grass. Oh, I'm boring. I just call it coleslaw. I'm <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not living my best life apparently. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> well, turn back to the audience for a sec. Does anyone else have a yeah? Yeah, come on up. That's right. She heard about the sandwiches, and now yeah. they're coming. I love yeah. the Walking uh, Dead shirt. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> this is a question for both of you. What inspired you both to, to uh, become actors? Well, you want to take that one first? <laughs> I yeah. sucked at everything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I have a better answer than that. Yeah, yeah. That's a warm up. That's a fa that doesn't count. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That's not the one. We just tried it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was I was I was always big into making stuff. So uh, I had like a martial arts background. And in high school, we were you know messing with like cameras and stuff, and uh, so we're always doing like some type of like fight choreographed thing. And and 
you know, we learned valuable things like we should use uh, like baby powder or <laughs> instead of powdered sugar for the effect to make the dust. So we start getting sweaty. And like, you know, when you do fight scenes, they always have the dust plumes. We didn't know. So we got powdered sugar because it was cheap. And then you just start sweating a little bit. And then it's just turning into like a, <laughs> a glaze. It's like, and you're like, oh, this isn't, this isn't good. We didn't anticipate this at all. And they're like, oh, they use a whole other powder. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, acting, a- acting is for me was just sort of like the next step of where, of what I like doing in film. I was, you know, I was a crew member. I did stunts. I was a sound guy. Uh, I can light, you know, uh, I like, I like shaping a scene using different, yeah, different lights, uh, I like messing with lenses, cameras, and then sort of like to talk with actors. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's better to sort of know how to like know the process of acting. Um, I was about to say it's better to know acting, but I'm not going to say that, but it's better to know the process so that you can just help your communication. But honestly, it's just all, all aspects of filmmaking is just like it's just a great excuse to like just have fun with friends and you know make make art you know and and just get to be creative at all times and every well nearly every aspect of filmmaking requires that like people have to think fast and they have to like you know depending on the location we have to learn to you know uh, adapt yeah and then when it comes to acting it's a really great way of just sort of getting rid of so many things that you might have inside you you know there's a lot of you know and you can just sort of be another person for a moment and just sort of get whatever you have to get off your chest it's very it could be very self-fulfilling and very selfish at the same time I, as far as a job i love it i have <laughs> a follow-up question just in regards to what you just said did you find like transitioning from like crew and background into acting like was that a hard process like like did it take you a while? Like, how was that transition? It's the only thing that was confusing for, or the thing, the hardest thing for me was to not help. Like, you know, because I'm used to, like, if I'm acting and then when you, we cut, I would then, I would, I'm used to, like, okay, now we gotta move lights and reset this and now go back into the scene. And this one, it's like, all right, don't touch anything. <laughs> Just do your job only. Who's breaking stuff over there? Yeah. So, yeah. What, yeah, what about you? Um, I started with musical theater first. So, I was predominantly a dancer and singer first, and I really didn't like acting at all. And then I went, I had to go and pick a major, so that was the only thing that had singing and dancing in it, was musical theater, so I had to act. And I remember my first, I went to a performing arts high school, and my first acting teacher at my first day of school He like went around the class and was like, why does everybody like acting? And then he got to me and I was like, I don't. (laughs) I don't don't wanna be here. (laughs) I was like, I just kinda have to take this course cause like it's mandatory. And he's still my acting coach to this day. So um, it just turned out that that was the thing that I ended up falling in love with the most. And you did modeling as well, right? Like early I did modeling on? as like a kid, like okay. a young a young buck, as, so as the youngins say. Even though you say like you went like it took you to acting, like that's where your career brought you. Was there like sing, like was singing, modeling, acting? Do you have like a favorite? Like what did you enjoy the most? Um, I th- I definitely thought like singing was going to be it. You know, I thought that that was going to be the move. But I ended up when I was like thirteen years old. I still have a very deep voice, but I had a really deep voice when I was younger, and I ended up having like two polyps on my vocal cords. So I had to get surgery and I was mute for about a year. And then I had to learn how to speak again. And the doctors were like, you might not be able to sing again. And I was like, oh shit, you know. (laughs) Can you still sing? And I, yeah. A little bit like, tell me why. Oh, you mean right now? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I I almost fell for it. And then. (laughs) I was like, shit, you almost got me. Um, but then I ended up, uh, I ended up being able to sing again, and then, um, yeah, and then it just kind of like, I don't know, it was, it was, it just changed the trajectory of how I looked at music, and um, and especially my acting coach, he just changed the way I thought about acting. So, so I actually want to take it back to that because you said until you met him, you weren't really like, totally. what was it about? that that made it click for you well nobody i mean everybody in musical theater like you know growing up in in the 80s and music with musical theater not a lot of people look like me so i would watch theater and i didn't see anybody that sounded or looked like me i had like a really deep voice 
and I was a mixed kid, so like just none of it fit. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't gonna be like your classical soprano, like oh, you know, like it wasn't gonna be Ooh. like you know, it wasn't gonna be like that, like that on stage. Nice. And I'm not gonna be in like Phantom or anything. So like, where did I fit in? Mm-hmm. So I didn't ever find myself anywhere. Yeah. And until he came in, he just came in with a new perspective that it was like, well, you can you can either make you can be the person that is the person that you end up seeing on screen for others to see, Mm -hmm. or um, there are other ways that you can come in here. There are other ways that you can kind of break the glass ceiling. So Mm -hmm. um, it was the way that he talked about acting that didn't feel like it was uh, forced and he just kind of welcomed me in. So it was, I think it was a lot of him. It's really nice to have someone in your life when you're just coming into an industry and they really make it. Yeah, they're like your mentor, you know, like he's, he, every single job that I work on, I don't go into an audition or I don't walk on set without working with Billy first. It's amazing. So I gotta ask, I'm gonna paint a scene here. Mm-hmm. Dark bar, you walk in, Ugh. the lights are shining. You had me it's a, bar. a karaoke bar. <laughs> Margot Bingham has been called to the stage. What is your go-to karaoke song? Can't explain all the feelings that you're making me feel. Yeah. Nice, yeah. definitely. The darkness. I believe in a thing called love. So that is awesome. Yeah. That I, is I awesome. I'm losing my voice, otherwise I would try to, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I'm not going to give it a totally, go. Totally, yeah. No. Uh, we'll save it for later. I can only but do the Marty, Cornwall Ross. The crazy good singer. Who? Like, He's a crazy no. good singer, She's, too. No, I like sometimes I can do it, and sometimes I have no control over what I'm singing. Or how, like, not like it goes through me. I mean, like sometimes I'm in key, and other times I picked a new note. What's your go-to? What, what's your go-to song? I don't know. How, see, that's that's where I fail. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what would like? What's your go-to theater song? Because every single time that I go over to Cooper's house, like he he's an amazing piano player, awesome musician, and we always and his wife is an amazing singer too, and like. It's weird how musically inclined a lot of the the cast is yeah. and crew for Walking Dead, and even Greg Nicotero, who's our EP and you know first zombie creator and everything. He has a band called The Rocking Dead, and I mean like that we just like we always got together like weekly and just played music together. But now we still play music together every time I come over, yeah, and we'll yeah, just sit down and just play like show tunes. Love that. No way. that this Rocking Dead awesome. is very yeah. intriguing. To Rocking me. Dead is really fun. All right. But Spotify. none of the none of the cast was a part of it. But unfortunately, it was just like all crew people. But um, would really you ever important. take the opportunity to take your musical talent to the big screen if you were given that chance? Like, could you see Cooper Andrews and Margot Bingham musical? What would that be like? Animation. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, as an animation for sure. Yeah, like uh, yeah. like a yeah. Pixar Disney. Like yeah, like got, some kind of like yeah. Musical, yeah what would uh, like what whatever. would Aquaman sing? I Ooh. think he's saying talking to the fish. Like this one, that one, her or him, or maybe <laughs> even this. I send out a kind of sonar, and then it's like, it goes into their brains. They shoot it back to me. Uh, yeah, there's a whole song for the Aquaman I, thing. I, I, really? I'm picturing yeah, the actual, scene yeah, in yeah, my yeah. head yeah. right now and with that like, voice. I had no clue because I did that. I did that Aquaman cartoon, and in the second episode, it's like, oh, there's a song. I'm like, there's a what? It's like there's a what? And it's just him, it's about Aquaman talking to fish. It's a 30 second song. And it's just. That and it feels just, so accurate. It's so, it's so silly. It's such a silly, silly thing. I'm doing this cartoon right now where I, I definitely get. Uh, there's definitely a few songs in there, but I, I, I sing with this voice more. And it's, it's me imitating my dad. And it's. What is this Polynesian movie or cartoon? And I, and I sing like that. So I go all these really deep. Well, that's really hard. Yeah, so it's like, um, uh, well, I can't sing any of them. <laughs> like, not allowed to. But there, but it's it comes out, it comes out in um, no teasers. Comes out in June. No teasers allowed. But I don't even know if I'm allowed. NDAs to for everybody. Uh, of course. Yeah, they're at the door, sign it, burn the tape. I see a hand over there. Yeah, yeah, coming up. Is it allowed the question? Are you allowed to say like what company it's about? Like for. The, you said animated something. Yeah, you know? it's well, it's for it's for uh, uh, is it a channel <laughs> <laughs> or is it? Their, I don't even know if it's for the channel or if it's for their, but it's for Disney Plus or Disney oh, okay. Channel. Oh. But it's something. But it's a fun. It's a fun cartoon. We we started it maybe like ten months ago. Started recording ten months ago, and I've done a bit of it now, and. 
I have to do some more on Wednesday. I'm just remembering all this. I'm like, oh, I gotta learn a song. <laughs> so these are good questions. Yeah. Reminds me about work. So oh, doing a oh, question here. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. How is it to see yourself on the screen, sitting down in a chair at home? Is it weird, or is it um, normal? <laughs> yes. How often do you watch yourself? <laughs> as often as I can. Um, I like to, I like oh, my stuff. God. Like on the show, I skip past everyone. I don't even know who your character is unless we did a scene. I just love me. No, okay. No, this is, this is a, like you said. Yeah, I've never, I've no. never even you seen act? you. And I don't know. So if you're never not, even seen you're you. Not, I've just been staring at myself the whole time. Yeah, you're not me, are you? No, I don't know your work. No, the, um, no. I, I have a real hard. I like. I force myself to watch me, but like. I remember the first thing I did, and I went on the, and I saw myself on screen. I'm like, this show just got cheaper. <laughs> like, every time I see my face, no. I'm, like, I'm like, oh, that's what goes through my head. I'm like, oh, that's because yeah. it, it, for me, it automatically is like, oh, it turned into an indie. It's turned into a, we just, we just. Well, <laughs> this is a student film. Yeah, it's a student film right now. They just put my face in it. Um, so I still get that. I still have that every time I see me, but like. I feel like every single actor that watches yeah. themselves is either disgusted or <laughs> is vomiting behind closed doors. Yeah. If, if they're watching. Yeah. If they're watching. And then if they're not vomiting or disgusted, then you're, you're looking it. at a narcissist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, they're like, I loved what I did. It's like, yeah. It's like I'm, like, I'm proud of what I've done. It's the best I could do at the time. I think that's a lot of us, you know. Um, and, and you want it whenever you're doing a scene, you definitely don't want to go in with that regret of like, no, oh, I wish I tried this. And then there are times like, I should not have tried that. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's more of that than, than, uh, uh, than, yeah, no, I'm nailing. I never feel like I'm nailing it. And you also, you know, a lot of it relies on that editor. So yeah. sometimes they'll pick an edit purely because the scene you did like, the, you were soft, you know, they, they didn't have you in focus. And they didn't realize it till playback, and then you're like, "Why?" Uh, like, why'd you pick the worst version? Yeah, that's. Like, <laughs> I swear I did a better version. Yeah, I, just, than this. I know I did better. I know I, mean, I did better than this. I wouldn't have loved any of it, but this is, you know, there's okay. For example, there's this one <laughs> uh, in season. It still bums me out because this is season eight, and I still get annoyed when I go, "Thank you, Your Majesty," and then I and I go for being such a cool dude, and then I look at him and I give him like this smirk. I'm like, I do one take of each angle where I looked and smirked, but that was not what I did. I'm like, I call that my CBS take. That's my, like, that's what I call, like, my, where I just ham it a little more, for, like, for being such a cool dude. When normally, it's like, just keep looking. You have a whole <laughs> army of walkers coming towards you. And it, I just feel it was like, for being such a cool dude. And let him sit with that. So I get really annoyed. And I'm like, you really needed the head turn? Just in case those words weren't enough, let's get the head turn. And then one, one we got of things we say once the show's over. The um, now, but there was one like this past season where, so uh, everyone's watched Walking Dead, or for the most part, like there's this we, during the cave, we two people disappear, right? Mm -hmm. So now we found we found Magna, but we're still missing Connie, and we were hanging up this dude, and he gets his hand bit, and then he's like. Mm -hmm. You were, like she was alone, and now she's gone, and her, you know. But and now she's there, and we're like we're realizing this person's alive, and and uh, <laughs> one actor had to say, "It's Connie," and they, they look, they're like, "It's Connie," but they hated that line. They were like, and all of us like, why are we saying that? We know who it is. We don't need to. We do not need to say this. And so uh, the next day, we, we like. We couldn't finish the scene because we were doing 10-hour days, so we had to finish the scene the next day because this person did not want to say the line. And we look at the sides, the line is gone. And then I keep reading, and now I see I have to say it. So now <laughs> I have to say it's Connie. So I do this thing where I had to act my way out of a scene making it, or a moment making it, because I did this number. I go, I turn around and I go, it's Connie. <laughs> and I did that every time. This was the, mo that was the most grounded version of it I could have done. Everything else, I always did a head down, like, it's Connie. And I overacted <laughs> the crap out of it. I was like, I hate this line so much. We cannot put this in the show. And they didn't put it in. Granted, I didn't have many lines after that either, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, what have we done? Like, Ooh, you know what? You know what? He can, he can stand there. 
<laughs> There's only so many microphones that we have. Why put him on any of them? <laughs> so, but yeah, there's yeah. So sometimes I have to use my acting to get out of things. I've done this. Never tried that. I've done it for auditions that I knew I had to read for, mm -hmm. and I got. And it was the only time I ever had to like the director and the casting people call back and go, "We loved his read. It was great, but we're going to go somewhere else." Normally they just don't tell you anything, but they went out and reached out, and that was the that was for a movie where I hated the character. I did not want to play it, but I also didn't want to not do the audition for them. And so that was the best audition. That was the best, that was the most successful audition I've ever had because I got exactly what I wanted out of it. <laughs> Good, think of me fondly. Do not ever call me for that kind of, I hate, I hate boring roles. Like I'd rather be in it for a little bit of time and be, be able to bring like some fun and light to it as opposed to just being like the, I say words because they're saying words and we're all upset because you know, why not? That's, you know, so it's a very, I don't like playing those boring characters. That was a, yeah, so I got out of that one. I'll tell you those movies later, though. <laughs> those, are, <laughs> those are for me to know. <laughs> so I was just wondering, you've done animated, you've done, obviously, live. What is your favorite? Do you lean more towards one or the other? Or what's more difficult? Um, it's, well, difficult, difficult, it's always the same. At the, at the end, it's always the same route. It's, it's always like, can I get in touch with this character? Like, do I? Can I get them at all? Mm. Um, with animation, performance-wise, it's the most fun I have. Uh, performance-wise, mm. so it's not the most fun I have. I have the most fun being on set, being with everybody. Mm. But you know, you mess up a line, and you're going to do it again. And it's like, oh, we get three in a row, and then you can really. With mean, the animated, you go way bigger than you would, um, uh, unless you're, you know, unless you're doing like the grounded kind of cartoon stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I want to be like, I like knowing I can go from here to really high and then low. It's like, okay, well, I don't think it needs to be that way. Maybe we can just make it a little, you know, you can do all these different inflections and mm -hmm. stuff with your, with your voice. And I love just being able to sort of go with all that. But then the, the, the making something with other people, I definitely feel that a lot more when I'm doing live action <laughs> stuff. So that's, so I still like that more, but mm -hmm. performance wise, I enjoy the, I'm, yeah, my performance wise, I probably do a little better on the animated because I'm very selfish. So it's, no one else here, perfect. It's all about me. The next four hours will be me going, hi, you know, breathing it. And I like doing the animatics where they, they'll show like a fight sequence and you're like, I'll, 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 normally they would just play it through, I'm, or they would just let you do the cues. I'm like, no, play it through. I'll just, I'll just live it, and I'll go, ooh, ah, uh, uh, ah, 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 oh, 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 and I like just doing that, and we'll do two takes, and I'm like, that's it, thank you, and then we move on. So I get, I do, and they always save that for the end for me, because they know I'm gonna like bust a vocal cord. I and hate, then, I hate those ones. Oh, God. oh really? I hate the ad libs. <laughs> They're so uncomfortable. Like I had to do this animation where I was like drowning, and I was like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, this is sucks. A lot more fear. A lot more panic. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. They're like a little bit more gargling. I'm like, oh, okay. We had uh, a feeling that you're going to do this. We brought you a bucket to yeah. stick your head in. Oh. Uh, like that Thank hurts. You. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of fear and panic, this next question is kind of for both of you. It's, you know, from years of watching interviews, I, I got left with an impression that the death scene for a character is not only a very stressful scene, but it can also be a very compassionate and magical scene because really it can become one of the most memorable scenes for a character. So for your characters in The Walking Dead, I need to ask if it ever comes to that, would you like it to be quick and painless or are you looking for a very dramatic and emotional out? Ooh. Oh, I mean, we're not really feeling it, so. <laughs> let's I wanna go by way of machete. Ooh, yeah. like just a sensible like slice down the middle. That keep sounds like, horrible. Keep like half of my face like still standing there, and then the other half like slowly goes away. Love that. Yeah, That'd be cool. Is, the the is glasses <laughs> like kind of split. <laughs> this one piece of glass. So yeah. dramatic. We're going for oh dramatic. Yeah. All right, all right. Glasses broke, and then your face falls off. Oh my glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to passion of the Christ my death. I want people to feel grossed out and <laughs> sick and sad. Yeah. For three hours. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've, yeah, I've always wanted, I've always, if I had a death scene, I'd have liked it to have just been 
I talked about it today. I was like, I like slamming my axe into a tree and then throwing walkers into it. But I just wanted to, you see the beginning of that and then the end, I just want you to see me like chilling by a tree, eating this cobbler, and then you see I'm like completely like about to die. But you just see me, I'm like, hell yeah. This is good. <laughs> that would be, that'd be my death. I killed it all. Like a half face type of yeah. guy, Houston <laughs> dying by the tree. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just, it'd be very, I want everyone to cry though. That's what I said at the end of uh, when I was saying goodbye on my last on my last day. I told that to Nadine. I was like, "I'm gonna make everybody cry." She's like, "What are you gonna say?" I don't know, but I'm gonna make everybody cry. With what? When uh, on my last day, of my last day of filming, when you know, when they're all like, uh, "Oh, that's a wrap on yeah. whoever." So like, my la very last day of shooting was like second to last day of the full yeah. wrap, and um, I was like, "I'm gonna make everybody, I'm gonna make everybody cry," and that was my goal, and I did. And then everyone cried. And I was like, ha, ha, ha suckers. <laughs> but it worked because I was crying. I was like, and that's why I didn't see Kari on, I didn't see Kari on his goodbye on set. I, I was I was at the trailers because I'm like, I can't cry twice in a row. I can't cry on set two days yeah. in a row. I that haven't was, cried. That was nice that everybody like really showed up for each other's goodbyes. You know, like yeah. even, you know, the people who didn't die on, you know, at the finale, like we all... We all showed up for each other. We waited. Like I remember my last night, y'all waited, stuck around, and it oh, was yeah. cold as hell. It yeah. was like one of those nights. It was at the gates of the estates, yeah. and it was so cold. It has like Georgia has this wet cold that like it feels like your feet are damp and just sitting in freezer boxes. We know that feeling. And you're just like your snot is coming down, <laughs> and you're just like you're like. I don't even know what to do at all because like your brain is frozen <laughs> it's you can't like even move and it's like, like th it was three yeah. in the morning and all of us were just like comatose like we were just like what is happening right now and everybody waited Every oh, yeah. everybody got out of costumes they got out of their blood and makeup and and they just like waited and then like whenever we weren't on set for you know like cassidy or whatever like we were all there we were just like we'd show up on set and um it was just really hard nobody wanted to say goodbye Aww. Well, especially like a show like The Walking Dead, like there's so many seasons, right? Like you get to be really, really close with these people. Like you work with them for so long. Like that's that's a big commitment, and it's you make friendships. Like yeah, really, yeah. I mean, for me, I was only on for two two years, so but um, only two and years. even two years. Only but two I mean, years only, of your life only two years of my life, you know. But I mean, but for the first year, it was uh, it was just my voice, so I didn't even meet anybody the first year, and because it was. It was during, uh, oh, COVID hadn't hit yet. No, it was September 2021, yeah. Or, sorry, no, 2019, 2019 yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, I'm going backwards. <laughs> um, forwards. You're doing time ah! Math. <laughs> um, but I, I remember, like, going in in L.A., and I just, like, had to keep going to the studio, but, like, or recording studio, but nobody was there except for Angela Kang and a couple of the other producers. And I'd yet to meet Josh. I talked to Josh on the phone but we never met in real life i didn't meet him until 2021 and so like it was just like a i guess it was three years then but still like just being in person with them for one year it was still very hard for me so i can't imagine mm -hmm. like y'all like who were on it for years or like melissa day yeah. one you know rooker norman like yeah, any, greg I mean, anybody like it's it, it's because it's not just there's sometimes you're acting with people and, and it's great and you have these good connections, but we still have that, but you have this physical element. So it's like, we've literally bled sweat, you know, and not like hardcore, I mean, we're still <laughs> actors, but I mean like, it's like, oh, I really stubbed my toe and you guys were there for me. No, but it's, it's, it's you have all these memories and not to mention, we have a lot of, like we get to do this, you know, mm -hmm. where we, like, yeah, we'll be with each other forever. Yeah, like, and we, you know, so, which is amazing. Yeah. Like, and we, we go all over the, we go to all the these world, places. Yeah. And, and then we just get to we learn about each other more, and we and we hang out more. And so like, Walking Dead like has a ensemble of like some of my closest friends, because it's just like, it's just it's a very it's a it's a odd. There's other shows, but this is a different this is a different kind of show yeah. in the sense of like how long it'll last. And it's just I don't know. There's a lot of you know we went through a lot together. So even I mean, like a if, year you about, like, your, if you think about like your if you think about your like your scholastic years, you know like. We have like you know middle school. I don't I don't know how your school is broken down as far as like years go, but like it's basically the equivalent of going to middle school and high school with the same people for like 
eight years of your life or like a whole university and then also your bachelor degree. Like if you think about that, if you've ever had a childhood friendship like that where you've been together with that person since they were neighbors or since you were kids and you're like, oh yeah, like I've known that person since I was a baby. Like obviously I'm always gonna know that person or they're always gonna be in my world. That's literally the equivalent of this. Like you'll never, we'll never have another job that puts us together this long with someone else ever again for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta ask, because the two of you have worked so closely in the horror thriller genre, uh, based on what you know of each other, what could you see the two of you working together? Like, if you were to ask Cooper, <laughs> You know, what could you see you and Cooper doing together as another type of genre? And then same question for you, Cooper, when you look at Margot, you know, what other kind of genre could you envision the two of you working in? Like comedy? Well, we are going to be working on something yeah. together that Cooper's creating that I'll let him tell. But, um, but Cooper's unbelievably special. Like, I mean, obviously he's an amazing human, great actor like awesome husband, great son, all the things. But like, he's just such Aww. a great friend and he's so multifaceted and talented that he could do anything that he wants. He's funny as hell, he's big as hell, so he can like kill lots of people, lots. you know, like, and then <laughs> like, you know. You know <laughs> You're all then, in danger. <laughs> and then he's also like an amazing actor so he can make you cry, you know, like he just, he has like the whole thing, you know? So I, whenever I look at him, it's it's just like an endless. I, I don't know what he could do next because he could do everything next. But I do know that we will be doing something together next, yeah. and I will let him. I'm jealous. I, I wish I had someone who talked about me that way. <laughs> you talk about <laughs> me like that all the time. <laughs> oh, You're like so weird. I weird. hear those same remarks from <laughs> your side. So, <laughs> Cooper, did you want to kind of? answer the same question I there? mean like, there's so when I see uh, especially when I see Margot like uh, it was actually at the it was I went she had a concert last month that I went to and that was sort of what gave me the idea for this thing I want to do that and by when I say I want to do something that usually means it's gonna it's go gonna to happen it. <laughs> um, yeah because I don't I don't like being beholden to anybody in any kind of thing so like if you know I have everything I need to shoot a movie. Like I have lights, like I have, I have cameras, but I'd, I'd still rent out, I, you know, but I love my lenses, uh, um, all the sound and stuff you could possibly need to do the things. I like, uh, but I love shooting. Like it's, it's like, you know, what do you do for fun? It's like, I like to just film like a scene and I don't show it to anybody, but I just like filming that, you know, like kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I've had, there's, yeah, there's quite a few, quite a few genre leaps that I would love to be making. Cause I love, I love comedy, but I also, I'm, because of the stunt background, I always like throwing in like a action thing, but I also want people, when they see a movie, I want, I like it being more of a feeling provoking than thought provoking in a sense, if that makes sense. If anything, I want people to walk away with like that feeling we used to have. It used to be, you can watch one movie and you didn't need to know what a sequel was gonna be because mm -hmm. you just enjoyed the movie, you know, and because you tell a full story. Um, this particular one would take a literal over a decade to to do, um, but yeah, I want to start that in December or January. Do we and, have any teasers? What's it um, about? Like showing Anything like different, at all? It's like showing different segments of people's lives, like yeah. a group of people and yeah. Literally just filming it almost like, um, almost like, what was the, it, boyhood? Like boyhood, yeah. I want to shoot, And just yeah. like literally like picking up different parts of our lives. There's a, a couple other friends of ours in the cast too, and, and he would just pick up yeah. different parts of our natural lives based off of the characters that we would be on this. Yeah. And just let us naturally age. And yeah. So this is going to, yeah. yeah, it's a 12 year project essentially that I want to start at the end of the year. Awesome. And it's, uh, It'll be a thing where in that 12 years, it will be a feature, but it will also be an option to make it into more because I know I'm going to have so much extra footage. But at the end of each, at the end of, uh, once we film it, I don't want to know, like I have a sort of, sort of map on where I'd like it to all go, but I really want us as actors and also what people. we're going, th yeah, yeah, as people going through our lives, how that might affect the change. So this is a thing where you'll see us age, um, uh, over the 
over the decade um, and sort of see where it goes to. But it, yeah, it follows uh, essentially it follows a band that um, goes at the beginning. It's a it's their they just finished their last uh, performance, and we now sort of follow these musicians and where they're going. My character will. Well, everyone will have, we all have some stuff that we're going to be going through and fighting, but it's, uh, I want it to be funny, but I also want it to hit, and it's, uh, but I want to shoot it on, I like to shoot it on 35, I want, I'm going to shoot it on film, but like Super 16 is probably what we'll go through, but it's, because I want a consistent look, that's the biggest thing, so, and also in a world of like artificial intelligence, I want people to know that, oh, this is really, there's no aging makeup, there's no, mm -hmm. this is just how it's going to go, so it's interesting for me, because I'm like, I'm going to be 50 when this thing is over. I know. Um, but it's and a, it feels weird too. like thinking yeah. about like the future of it. It's like, wow, like I'm Sounds really, amazing. I'm going to see myself yeah. in real time. Just like age. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. And it, and it, it's and it terrifying. will, but it's, <laughs> it is, it's going to be, well, it's, it's, it's going to be reflection a little bit. Cause like, I mean, we were all like, Oh, I hate how I look. Oh, I hate how I, I look yeah. so old or whatever. Like, I mean, I mean, you know, my wife's been saying that since she was like 27 and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on. She's like, I do. I'm like, no, you don't stop. You know? And then, um, but it's it's a very I'm I'm very much like what you are is what you are you know and and like why I mean yeah you can always improve but what you are at that moment is literally your best your 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 best outcome because that's what just happened and to be able to see that and also know that there's just different mentality going through it and even even in the jumps the the filming I can imagine like techniques like just changing up a little bit but I really want it to just sort of go into this idea of like where we, I really, I just want, I just want people to just sort of like take in what they are at the moment and enjoy that and sort of, I want that, that's sort of the feeling I'm gonna try to go for in this thing, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. And then there's some other, there's some other, uh, in the meantime, there's also some silly projects that are like a little more action comedy and end of the world comedies kind of that, that I'll be throwing out there. So yeah, I've been putting a lot of time into like too much time into that and whatever food is next. The question to me. was about how you saw me, Cooper, not yourself. <laughs> huh? Well, no, Such an it's. Actor. But the point of it is all these Such things. So I know I said it was a selfish thing. I didn't say I wasn't. I was going to talk about me. I'm very good at this. But um, no. But the thing about but yeah. The, but when I saw Margot on stage, because I knew I wanted to do this 12 year project, um, and I knew sort of how I want it mapped. But then seeing how like I'm like, oh, this is what I want to see. I want to watch. I want to watch this. And we, but the way the characters are designed, it's like they're designed to fail and succeed, and it's, and I want to take us through all that. Um, but yeah, when I see Margot, really, it's like she can be anything. She's you're like, I mean, you're so goofy, but then you're also so serious. It's like you can be, like it's it's just it's just amazing because it's like a, like when you look at an actor, it's like oh, you can play anything, you know, and it's and it really is like a like a testament to the skill because there are. Yes. There are so many actors where it's like you just want to see them do that. Like that's all I want from them. But then with Margot, it's like you can, you can go all over the place. Well, and earlier you were talking about kind of like representation, right? Like whenever you were starting out, you're like, there's not a lot of people who look like the way that I do, yeah. and there's, you know what I mean. So you kind of wanted to, I guess, pave the way, so to speak. Yeah. But is there like a role that you have in mind that you would love to do before, like before the end of your career or whatever? Like, is there yeah. something, especially in regards to, like I said, like that representation? Yeah, I mean, I've been really lucky. I've played amazing parts and I really, I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, I think I've been like a character actor. Like weirdly, like when you, when you think about it, when you think about a character actor, you're like, wow, they're always like over the top or they always play these really big parts. But I'm like the under, ra under the radar character actor. Like nobody ever recognizes me, which is great. And like, I never really look like how I look like on camera, which is awesome and really fun. And I get to really throw myself into the person. And like, I just finished a, a prequel to Yellowstone and it was like, we did like 18, Ooh. 71 and yeah. I got to play like a black Seminole woman and it was just like I mean and I don't look like that either so it's just it's just very cool to be able to think like I've just played these they're not crazy people they're people that we see in our everyday life and they're people that I've seen as well but um, but I don't really look like any of them which is awesome um, so it's ironic that like you know I was trying to find somebody that looked like me and I don't really look like me in any of them but <laughs> um, but I would love to play a villain Ooh. I'd love to play Is some insane like super off the rocker horribly malicious villain is there like a Disney villain that you would like to play just oh, like God. do you have like a favorite Disney villain I need to know this I mean 
I don't know, maybe Ursula. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I th I think like yeah, just somebody. I mean, like she has to be a psychopath. Like I want her to be like a true sociopath, and then like end at the end, like her dying in some like disgusting way, Space and then just like half. facing like the reality of her of her problems and her actions and looking at them and feeling like like sorrow for one second and then finishing her last breath like no like i did yeah. the right thing <laughs> like, uh, like I no just, regrets yeah no regrets at all no regrets. i would love to play like a horrible villain That'd now my imagination's is picturing yeah yeah, yeah that would yeah. be great do we have any other <laughs> audience questions anybody have anything oh, oh I see one back two. there yeah hey laura couple. come on up <laughs> Or shall I say, Michonne? Yes, I appreciate that too. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I had just a quick question. I don't know if you've ever been asked this before, but working on The Walking Dead, for example, me as a fan, watching the show, reading the comics, it goes into my subconscious. I get zombie apocalypse dreams often. Maybe it's something a sign of being stressed. Yeah. You guys being in it with the special effects, does it ever affect your psyche like that? Or are you more like sensitive to jump scares in your day-to-day -day life? You know, I, um, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I actually shadowed, I'll eventually like move into to directing and producing in the next like couple years. Um, I've been shadowing Greg Nicotero, who again is our EP, and he works on Creepshow and also on a AMC. And I went out, um, also shot in Canada. Um, where were we? Vancouver, yeah. We were in Vancouver and he was working on an episode and all the crew was like, you know, like when Greg walks into a room, he's just like this icon. He's this, he's the monster man. You know, he's known as the monster man. And there's nobody that's better than him. He does every prosthetic, every monster movie that you can think of. There's always like a thank you, Greg Nicotero in there. Like he's always been on it. Um, and when he walked on set, like the admiration that is for this man is out of control and also the fandom for this man. So like there's a lot of crew that are like, oh my God, like how is it just being with him? Like how is it? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Greg. It's oh, Greg. I don't know. Greg. Like I, I don't care. Um, but I do care. But, yeah. he, but, uh, but I remember when like the zombies came on, a couple of our special effects people were also on set for that production. He brought them from Walking Dead to Creepshow. And obviously I knew the guys because we worked together. And um, and I remember like the first time that the first zombie came on set, everybody was like, whoa, whoa. And I was like, I am so comfortable around this. <laughs> like, I'm like, hold my beer, you know, like it just, it when there's a zombie around, I feel really, at peace. <laughs> Weird, weirdly at peace. I don't dream about them. If I dream about them, maybe I'm like, I'm making out with one. You know, like, it's just like a, like, I just like, when they're around, I'm just like, what's going on, man? What's up? You good? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. And that's like, that's basically the conversation. But there was one time that it really stuck with me for another project. I did this project called The Family. On, a on ABC, and it was about a child being abducted. It was really, really I fucked up dark. It was a really yeah. dark one. Um, and we were shooting this scene. I play a detective, um, another detective, and oh, I was solving the case. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll um, find your child. Yeah, we'll murderer. find your kid. Don't you worry, man. Um, I don't know. But of course, she had like a drug problem or a drinking problem. Mm -hmm. Always with the problem, you know? I play problems really well. <laughs> uh, there's no connection in life, but um, but I uh, I was supposed to go into this hotel and f we were trying to find this child that was abducted. He was like probably four or five years old, and um, and I remember going into this scene and this location, and it was just at a production stage. Like it was not a real motel, but they made this creepy hallway and this door and this like real room that made it feel like a real creepy hotel, and this child who was definitely like six or seven in real life he was playing like a four or five year old he was really bound up in front of me on a bed and it was really Ooh. dark to see and i was like okay like in my mind i'm like just this is like fake this is fake but for a child i don't know if like their parents really talk them through and let them know that it's really fake i'm like you know i'm seeing the mom watching her child on screen like it's just there's so many fucked up things you know like that are just like crossing wires here that i'm like this is really hard and then, um, and then the guy that took him is like in the bathroom and the scene is supposed to be, he's supposed to walk out and I shoot this man um, because I don't even care who it is. I know that this child is abducted and he's dead to me. Um, and so I remember shooting this stunt guy 
and he had like a squibby in his chest, which is basically like a pocket of fake blood, and it explodes off of our fake gun um, that is cleared on set, and there's nothing in the chamber. It's a fake gun, but there's a little clap that, or like a little like pop that happens that sounds like a real gun. So that's the timing that the squibby goes off and the stunt guy flies to the back of the wall and he's like, explodes his chest. And there was just something about, you know, you're holding a real gun, the weight of a real gun. You know there's nothing real in there. You know there's no bullets in there. You know there's a stunt person in front of there. You know that there's cameras here. There's something super screwed up about seeing a man go backwards. You're holding a gun. You pull the trigger of a gun and you see blood explode and someone's like, that is breathing go back and play dead it really like to this day it still brings me like i mean i've killed a lot of people on camera but for some reason that specific one sticks with me so much that i like i had nightmares for a long time and and i still like every time that i'm handed a pistol i like ask the person that i'm pointing the pistol at like hey do i have permission to point this gun at you right now like even if they're like you know ready like you know action i'm like excuse me for one second do i have permission to hold this barrel at your face and if i don't get like a like an actual verbal clearance i just it's just like a f weird it's weird it like you know you can only do so much as an actor that like you know that you're playing pretend for a living, but that there are things that start feeling very real that you're like, I don't want to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. The um, gun story I had a uh, um, for for the show, season eight was the last time we used uh, real guns like at all with blanks, and then it became like rubber guns or plastic or you know like airsoft looking and. Um, when I do that, there's a scene where like they capture me and I like I slide down the ramp. Um, and then Simon gives like this whole speech and they shoot a guy in the back of the car thing. But when I slide down the ramp on my stomach, uh, I do that, I did this scene 12 times, but the first time uh, it pulled my pants down. So I'm, I'm walking and then I stumble, but the friction makes it so my pants, so I have like half my butt out. And the guy has a gun to my head and he's also like trying to like assist. Mike, he's trying to like assist with the pants while there's a, Gun, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I know, I'm like, that's a breeze, and he has the gun. You just feel him like fitting, you know. I remember at the at the end of the take, you know, and it's, again, it's like a five minute scene because there's so much dialogue, not from me, me, uh, and I go up to the scripty, I go up to Amy, I go, hey, so did anyone know? And before I finish the sentence, she goes, oh, it wasn't that bad. I'm like, so you know when I'm, wasn't that bad, huh? Yeah, we're gonna do it a few more times. Yeah, and even at the end, even this end result, I'm like, well, that's still like butt cleavage, I guess. That was like a very, I hated those clothes in those butt years. Butt cleavage. Butt cleavage is so gross. But was the, there ever a killing that made It's you a reminder scared? to check. So yeah, I never got. Um, to me, I've always so again, I've like the zombie stuff. I always say like me as a me as a person would survive a lot more easily than Jerry. Um, would <laughs> I always made I like making Jerry a little more fumbly and stumbly and I and at the end I was like oh is this my last sort of sword thing so I was like all right I'll, I'll go I'll go off a little bit but like before then I wanted to make look make everything really like rough and heavy looking um, but yeah so pretty much for that I like if it was like Walking Dead walkers I have zero worry about that situation now if it was any other kind of zombie. I'd be like, I what about, know. What about like the last climbing zombies, like the ones that were like even, able to like? Oh yeah, the yeah the variants. Even the, even that one, I'm like, yeah, it's just a little bit of climbing. You know, I'm not like. Terrible. Couple of them were pretty fast. They are. They are. I mean, and like that was like you know. Yeah, I just uh, felt like I slow. I was so slow on the show. Everything felt like I was just waiting forever. <laughs> I really wanted to have a scene where I just went through. I, I really feel like confidently. Confidently, I feel like I can go through 20 walkers, not a problem, wow. as, as Cooper with the sword. Okay. That's I do have how. a video of Cooper on, um, <coughs> at base camp on set. It was like, I don't know, it was me, you, Paola, yeah. <laughs> and I think Nadia or something. And we were just like, we were just bored and screwed around and just like waiting to go on set. And he was just like, Paola was like, we were booty popping or some shit and like and i had my dog with me so i was like making her dance on her hind legs and like moving her paws and being stupid and then there's cooper in the background and he's like we're blasting this music and he's like dancing choreography but with his sword and his axe and he's like 
like it's so <laughs> just, sick. It yeah, was so like, cool. Yeah, it looked yeah. like it looked like I went to like a hibachi meal, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you were just like choreographed. It was so smooth. I wish I could have put that in The Walking Dead, but. Yeah, I'm always yeah. I sent the video. That, and I'm yeah. like, oh. I'll show you later. Yeah, it's okay. a very yeah. It's a lot of I like a lot. Of, I I don't really do flourishes as a. I'm very like my sword style and fight style. It's all very direct. I don't like I don't like doing all the flourish stuff. But they're like, hey, can you add a little more of that. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do. <laughs> so, but I, I'm 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 very much like let's go through. Uh, I like clean lines. I think that looks cooler. But yeah, I I don't know. I'm I, on the show. Nothing really terrifies me more than like real life I guess when um, that's why I like going hiding into movies when <laughs> what's his name died um, when uh, uh, Sebastian when he died um, when Teo's there we go I was like oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I can't say his real like without his real name when Teo died and he got bit in his neck at the carnival like you know um, that was a that was a big that was a big sequence yeah, because it was. Yeah. he was wearing this whole like prosthetic neck piece and I got this close up at Video Village where like I was literally filming it on my phone filming the 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 um, screens and they did this zoom in that like literally showed the zombie chewing like taking a, a chunk of his skin pulling it out and there was like this string that was like i was like oh it's so, gross, so gross so gross and his scream was so pathetic yeah. it was yeah. like it was like this high like <laughs> i think i think he screamed mom at one point which i think they might have cut which was just i thought that that was brilliant i was like you got to keep mom in there yeah. like pamela milton it was just so funny that was that was gross but <laughs> Yeah, that didn't, but that didn't scare me though. Yeah, no, it's just fun to watch because I mean, you do look at the artistry of it because you're like, wow, they put Sanu in. Like the, the amount of time, like the amount of hours that that took for that placement, just for one placement, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just you see, like you sit in in the chair for hours as zombies, and like it's just, I mean, the artistry is spectacular the mm -hmm. way that they do it. It's just, it's crazy, and most of it is by hand. And when and when Greg directs like Greg directs, he still can't help. Remember I was saying like, well as an actor, it's like when I see like a microphone or I see a light stand, I'm like, oh, 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 oh I won't touch it. That's Greg can't That's do Greg, that still. Yeah. He he yeah. he like like we had that again that reindeer walker we had with the antler in its body. The guy they put that blood in, but it would go away. You know, it's edible blood, and so you see <sighs> with the whitest teeth you would see it on a walker, where you're just like that doesn't quite match and you just see Greg like yeah he grab a bottle and just squirt it at somebody and be yeah. like okay ready action yeah he's like action after I and like it, like whoever was supposed to do it like they're like alright Greg do the thing so he like I, that's the stuff I love yeah. that's the, that's the it, when I was booming on this show that it has a very like indie feel to it where it's like yeah. we can cross departments it's fine you know you're allowed to you know and it's that part I love it see to me that sh the show is so massive but like, and like what we were doing, and then whenever we do like the LA stuff and the premiere stuff, it's always like, this doesn't feel like the show. The no. show to me feels like, like you, even your car is gonna get messed up going there because they didn't want to pave the road. It's like a- Oh my God, my car was like, I was like living out of my car. It was like yeah. so much dirt. I remember oh, I got yeah. my car cleaned one time and this, the guy was like, what are you doing in here, ma'am? And I was like, <laughs> don't ask. Yeah, no. <laughs> there are definitely bodies back there. <laughs> like, also there's seriously bodies back there. <laughs> yeah, you'll get, you'll sometimes drive, drive over where they killed things. There's like a little blood that like Also like if tire. you, it, like you forget, like if you go into a place and you still have blood on your neck or whatever, people yeah. are like, uh, you know, like you'll go to like on a plane and we'll get off of set and we'll have blood under our fingers and you yeah. go through security and they're like, can you step to the side? <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, I didn't really kill somebody, but like there's really blood, like swear it's just fake blood. Like, well, <laughs> look. Yeah, they're still alive. <laughs> I think we've got a couple questions over here. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, you shared an amazing story. One of the funniest I've ever heard is that pan story. Um, I've heard a lot of stories from Walking Dead, and that takes the cake right there. <laughs> oh, God. Like uh, you know. um, uh, so in, in that vein, at the comic conventions you go to, wherever they are in the world, uh, would you mind sharing with us the most absolute crazy, fun, strange, amazing experience you've had at any of them? One particular one that you thank your lucky stars that you're famous enough to have actually gone and had that experience. Oh, 
some it could be anything uh, i mean well i was uh, my favorite movie uh, I've, it took me years to come down to what is my favorite movie for years like up until like a few months ago i was like oh, i can give you my top five but my favorite movie of all time i've now decided is superman the movie um i just think everything from like acting to writing to direction to locations like everything about that movie i think is amazing um, and uh, uh, what was the question again? There's, this is a lead-in. Hold on. I, there's <laughs> Part two. Uh, the most amazing, crazy, weird so, experience you've had you. at a yes. Comic-Con. So there was this Comic-Con in Idaho. And, I mean, there was, this was like summer. It was, it was really low-key. And so I had a lot of time where I got to hang out with Margot Kidder, who played the uh, – well, not the original, but she played Lois Lane in those movies. And that lady – she had some views. I mean, she was just, she's, I mean, she was nuts in the best way possible. I mean, she was really, really cool. So for me, that was like, I'm hanging out with Margot Kidder this weekend, you know, and it was like eating dinners and just like, just chatting her up. I'm like, this is, this is great. So that, for me, that was a, that was a massive experience for me. Um, and then, uh, uh, but I mean, there, are, I mean, there's situations where like that after that episode of where, uh, where we lose all the kingdom and we lose Shiva and everything and Kari and I go to DC and this guy comes up to our table and he's like, you like helicopters? And we're like, sure. And he's like, you want to ride in a helicopter later? And we're like, okay. We had no, <laughs> didn't ask this guy anything, but this was a, uh, this was a police officer and <laughs> But he was like head of like this entire like this guy's like it's one of those things where like there's no way you're real and then you see videos and you're like oh this guy's very legit so we're driving through dc he's just running every red light you know he doesn't and he's we're in his like souped out jeep and, he's like, and no cop is coming out at all we're driving past cops and like he'll flick them off or something and then they'll like and they just let him go through and then we do a ride along in a helicopter so this is me and kari who just had this week of like oh and now we're flying over like restricted airspace because they can, you know, and then we actually have to chase somebody on a helicopter. So the helicopter is normally like this, it's cruising. And then the moment something happens, it pretty much goes like Whoa. down nearly like, I don't know, like 80 degree tips down. And then you're, and it starts circling around. And Kari and I start going, <laughs> into the microphone. I was like, <laughs> and they're like, we normally don't scream, th we normally don't scream through the, the microphones <laughs> like sorry <laughs> uh so yeah that was yeah that was another experience that was like super like w how did this happen yeah 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 what's mine oh um oh god i did a comic-con i forget where i was but my so growing up uh one person that really did look like me on ish ish on camera was uh, from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It was uh, the sister Hillary, uh, the Hillary. sister Hillary, and um, and my mom and dad would um, sometimes like sometimes I could be a little dum dum, and uh, <laughs> growing up, my if I said something really stupid, my mom would be like, "Okay, Hillary," or my dad would be like, "Okay, Hillary," <laughs> and I just always felt like such a dumbass. And then I went to a Comic Con. This was only like a couple months ago. And I went for the first day, it was Friday, we set up, it was, uh, you know, fun, normal. It was with, um, uh, oh my God, who plays, it was uh, Alex's one son um, that gets in, oh, 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 in oh. Uh, Cooper? yeah. Or not Cooper, his brother. His brother, not the one that dies, that ends up wanting to kill Rick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but God, in actually, weir in weird time. life, he is he, he's the brother of the girl that played Sophia in real life. They're like all a family. Both oh, of them oh, are on oh, Walking oh, Dead, oh, which you're, is so you're crazy. With, uh, Matt. Uh, yeah, Matt. Matt. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about um, Matt. Didn't want to kill Rick. It was the um, it was, oh, it was another the kid. Other kid. Yeah, yeah, other yeah. Kid, yeah. yeah. No, sorry, was, I'm getting them confused. The, the children of Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, he was um, there. Was a, yeah, we but he was so he was sitting next to me, and there were like a couple other people sitting in front of me at other tables. I was like, oh, this will be fun. This will be a good weekend. And then the next day I come in and the tables had been rearranged. And I went to go over to this booth because I just see an Afro and I was like, oh, that's mine. That's me. Um, and I start walking and then I look up and I realize it's not me. It's Karen Hill from <laughs> fucking Hillary from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And I start losing my shit and I hide behind my table. And there were probably like 10 people that saw me. I was like, oh! <laughs> I like hid. And the person that was at my table, they were like, are you okay? Are you okay? I was like, 
Fresh Prince of Bel Air? And she's like, Yeah, that's everybody keeps going over there thinking it's you. And I was like, I was like, Oh my god. And I like had to sit there for like a minute. Like you weren't there to even talk to you about. Like I was like, Josh Hamilton was there. Seth was oh, there too. Oh. And Seth came over and he's like, What are you doing? And I was like, it's Fucking Hillary from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was like, That's a, like I was like losing my shit. And he was like, uh, Hey, uh, Karen, can I have you come over? I was like, Seth, shut up, shut up, <laughs> shut up. And he's like, Hey, Margo, I have someone that I'd like to introduce you to. And I was like, Oh my God, oh my God. And I like lost my mind. And then throughout the weekend, she would just talk to me and she would like, because we were literally sitting across from each other. <laughs> She'd be like, Hey, Margo, can you play a song? I was like, Whatever you want, Hillary. I mean, Karen. I mean, like, <laughs> like, uh, like, that was like the one moment that I, I actually, I'm not like a fandom, like an any any way like maybe there's a couple people that I think I would lose my mind but that was so unexpected I never thought I would meet her and it was just like so bizarre because she's the nicest person and she's so not Hillary in real life she's so smart and intelligent and beautiful and awesome and and just like just seeing her I just couldn't believe that I actually hid behind a table like that's there's nothing about me in that story that like if you talk to any of my friends they'd be like you didn't do that like yeah, I a, that is so not, not me and not I her. I saw her and I was just like <gasps> <gasps> I was like I was just like hit the deck so fast but it's a classic sitcom I mean, absolutely <laughs> terrified, terrified, <laughs> and so excited. And then I got so sweaty. But <laughs> <laughs> who, would, uh, who would do that to you, Cooper? I mean, I've done, there's a few, there's quite a few people. You Where, could hit the deck like that. Well, hit the deck, hit the deck. No, but like I, I was, I was a huge fan of Spartacus. And uh, I don't know, do you guys watch that show? Did you ever oh, see yeah. it? Um, and Manu Bennett uh, like plays one of my favorite characters, Crixus. And first time. We were in Germany, and first time, like, he meets, he has, like, this friendly smile. And we're, we're just in the green room, and he, and I go, what's up? And I'm like, oh, Crixus. I do this imitation of him, too. Navia, when he speaks, he has sort of the <laughs> speaking way about him, and he's very, yeah, but I do that. And then I was like, yeah, Navia. <laughs> but I want to just go, like, Navia. <laughs> That's all I want to do. And I, I just completely go, how's it going? <laughs> and me, I'm like, oh. like real, real life me, like or what was really inside was internalizing. Was, hey man, hey, oh, I cried for like hours when they chopped your head off, bro. Oh man, I, w I was so glad when they killed that guy. He deserved it, man. I would, you know, but I was, yeah, huge fan of Spartacus. So if I see any of that that cast, I'll for sure. Lose like your mind. yeah, I'll for sure lose it. Good, good to yeah. know for the future. Yeah, and and every now and again they're like. What's up? Yeah. What show is that? Mm, cool. Haven't heard of it. Yeah. I've watched like eight to nine times through. It's a great show to work out to. Obviously, I haven't watched it in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it is great to experience that feeling because I'm sure it must really help when it comes to doing things like this, you know? So you kind of have an idea of what a lot of people are experiencing themselves. Um, I showed, I did get to come up with Totally. Yeah, yeah like we, we get that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, before, I mean, Walter Jones, who plays the uh, the original uh, Black Power Ranger, um, I took, I, w I remember as, I was in Maryland, I was like 10 or 11, and you know, I would like that, you remember that black camera where you just sort of like, you had the, the slider, the sliding thing, and I, you know, I had all this stuff on me. Mm -hmm. I just take a picture of him, I don't have the, you know, I'm 10, I didn't know if someone could take a photo of us. And then, you know, cut to 20 years later, and he's like, Hey man, I'm such a big fan of your character on the show, and I'm like, no way. And then, <laughs> and then, like hanging it's out, trippy. hanging out with him and uh, uh, and uh, Jason uh, Austin St. John, uh, the original Red Ranger, just hanging out with them uh, oh through New Orleans for like a weekend was like, I'm like, how is this happening right now? You know? So, yeah, the Power Rangers, I'm a massive fan of. Yeah. I still gotta watch the the new Mighty the Morphin. New one, yeah, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Don't, yeah, don't, don't, no, no, no. <laughs> she, she doesn't get to have this. You're not nerdy enough. Hey, I played the yellow Power Ranger for Halloween one year. There you go. I was seven. <laughs> okay. I have so much more respect for you now. Thank you. Yeah, before, before this I was here, but now I'm about here. Uh, I had a little <laughs> coin thing that you screwed in. It still works. I remember I had my T-Rex, my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's do this. You, you even did the hands too. I the did the hands too. <laughs> like I was into. It. Yeah. I was in front You're of like my I mirror. Like I had the T Rex thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I grew up in the woods. Imagination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, just to say it, but just to bring that up, also like, uh, 
yeah, like he he passed in no- November, and I was really yeah. upset about that. But like Jason David Frank was like such a cool dude. I remember when I first met him, he was like, "Hey man," I was like, "Hey, hey." So I don't I don't watch any of your stuff, but you seem really cool, man. And I'm like, "Thanks, dude." And then I but then I, it ended it turned into like these. Every time we saw each other, we'd be gone for like an hour and just have like these long conversations where it would just be. Uh, so like the, I mean they were like my I mean I was you know I was doing martial arts since before the show you know I started when I was three doing you know doing kung fu and working on like footwork and stuff and and uh, so when the Power Rangers came out I was like oh you know and so we just had like these long martial art talks talking about the industry and just you know and, and it was like so to me that was that was probably the coolest thing I I, I would have freaked out more at that point but I met them later on as I got used to these things and I'm like hey so fan of your <laughs> your stuff man hey just so you know you're, you're you do good work you know and then like what well, you know but yeah. yeah power rangers was big for me there's yeah. a lot of amazing people that we meet at cons yeah, you know? so like, many, yeah. like pinky in the brain was big for me oh yeah, like, yeah. maurice yeah and, yeah, and, yeah. Like, we had that dinner with and them. we had that dinner. <laughs> <laughs> like i mean like it's just you know like i met like the charm cast like yes. another like it, i mean it's just nostalgia you watch these shows and then you know, we're all just people. We just chose, you know, or maybe this job chose us, but like, this is just, we have a nine to five, just like anybody else. We just play pretend for a living. Like that's it, you know, but like, you're always connected to something like you are with music, like a song. You always remember like where you were at that point in your life when you hear a song. It triggers you like a, like a scent, like a smell or something that you just like remember somebody that you were with or dated or your grandmother, or your mother with a scent. Like it's no different than for us. We, we walk around, we see these cons and, and other amazing artists and actors. And we're like, oh my God, like, like literally like Hillary, like I just, I remembered being in my kitchen and like my dad, like blowing me off and being like, okay, Hillary. you know, like it just like, it just triggered me right there. It didn't even matter about Karen. Like she was not a part of it in that moment. Like just the character was, and I know yeah. that that was make believe, but it's, it was real for me. So it's just like, yeah. it's, it's all the same for us too. It's all, but it's more, it's, it's usually more like a five to nine. Uh, work schedule is to be instead of nine to five. Yeah, yeah. instead of nine. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of times. It is. Like a, yeah, it's it's, like a it's, five it's, to it's nine. the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> we're heading to work around three in the morning and getting out around I remember midnight. Sharing fries and I bought Maurice the uh, brains burger, and he's like, "You don't have to." I eat a lot of burgers. Apparently, mm-hmm. that's why I'm realizing when I go out of town. But the uh, <laughs> um, he's like, well, "You don't have to do this." Like, oh uh, yeah, I kind of do. You like you've. Because, but the thing is, like all these, all these characters, all these actors are people that have influenced us. It's like every time you see someone's work, it does yeah. go into you. It, it, it. Like that's with anybody. That's any yeah. human being has some sort of influence on you and how you do your life. Yeah. And then when it comes to performances, you know, you, you just think about. Every time I think about Brain, I'm always thinking about when he meets like Dolly Parton or like the fake Dolly Parton, and he's like, "Puberty has served you well." And I remember not knowing what that word meant at the time. I was like, a what? A what did he? Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> puberty. puberty. And there was no internet to look that up. So it was. So you had to go into your dictionary, your I, encyclopedia. No, I just. Like, <laughs> figure out, was it A through D? No, D I just. through, D, what is it? D, J. It was, it, was just J one those, it was just one of those things where you, you like, at the time, like, I mean, before internet, it really was like, I don't know what that is. Guess I'll never know. Yeah. I'm like, I am not gonna look this up. Go upstairs and look it up. Nah, I think that's what it is. We're yeah. just gonna go with that. So yeah. I'm just saying, puberty has served you well. And then like later on, I'm like, oh, that's what puberty is. <laughs> Got it. Got it. I'm just saying that to everybody. Another so. cool. One. I met Pocahontas once, oh. and that was stellar. I mean, like she's just like this small little woman, like so sweet, lives like in Ohio, like just like chill, like you know. And they were talking to me about music. I was like, this is so crazy. Yeah. I was like, I think like I had an American Girl doll because of you. Like this is just like <laughs> colors of the wind. Yeah, we like singing that song. We like singing that. Song. That's yeah. a great colors song. Of the, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other questions? Okay, hand up, yeah. Have you ever... Um, yes. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> fans make fanfic and make edits of your characters. Have you ever read or watched any of those and just... Okay, so <laughs> I, I, don't think, I don't know if anyone was... There's nothing of me that I knew of to read, but what, for um, Den of Thieves, it was a movie I did like six years ago or five years ago, and, and um, 
they're like, does he have a reel? Does he have a reel? And I just, <laughs> like, my agent's like, do you have a reel? I'm like, no, I don't. I didn't make a reel. And then I go on YouTube, uh, and <laughs> someone put a compilation of Jerry, Jerry stuff, and so I just sent that to my agent. <laughs> <laughs> so I used I used this fan made edit to, <laughs> as my reel, and I gave it to the thing. I got that job, but it was a very. It's like here's my real scent. <laughs> so yes, I have seen I have seen that. <laughs> I read stuff like when my character was just coming out on Walking Dead and I like was up I was keeping up with what fans were saying about it and how they were perceiving like the real Max versus Stephanie and how they were following it cuz I knew what was going to happen and and my mom, every single morning, would send me like five new articles. She's like, they figured it out. Look, they figured it out. I was like, okay, they're gonna figure it out. You know, like people are gonna, people aren't dumb. They're gonna like, they're gonna figure it out. But AMC was so specific. They were like, don't leak anything about Max. Like you're Stephanie. And I was like, okay, got it, word. And then AMC posted a picture of me and then said character Max. And I was like, they always do You that. leaked it, you moron. Yeah, they always say something. I remember, like, Shazam, first <laughs> one, that, like, it, like it, when they put me up, they go, uh, Cooper Andrews, uh, before the, the name and everything, it was, like, Foster Dad. And then WB hits hits up my people, and they're like, because uh, I did, like, a, I, I did like some interview. Like, oh, I played the Foster. He's like, he shouldn't be telling anybody what he's playing. I'm like, you put it on the thing. <laughs> Foster you dad. put it out there. You did it. So like, like the so someone's that. Yeah, you're asking about my relationship with WB. That's my relationship. <laughs> you told me that. Uh, no, but it was like a. You, they're they're always like. They're keep always this so secret. specific about like keeping us shut up, and then yeah. somebody from marketing screws up, and they put yeah. it, and I'm like, you guys shot yourself in the foot. Yeah, like, they do it all the time. I was time. like, it wasn't us. Like we weren't the morons. Yeah, no photos, and then like they'll be like. And then they'll post like a series of photos. Yeah, I'm like, put a cool of, story, guys. It's like great, great photos. <laughs> Okay, another question. Uh, so I, when they first announced Cape for 2023, because I, I came here this year and last year, I always search up the people that are going to be here. And I, my parents noticed you from The Walking Dead, and I noticed you from um, Shazam. And I looked, I searched you up on Google. And what is, what, what's the hat? What, what's the oh. backstory on this hat? I, yeah, I just well, need to know. I, I shaved, I did this <laughs> short film, so I shaved my beard. And it's funny, when I shaved my beard at the beginning of pandemic, people were like, Cooper Andrews character dies. Uh, Jerry dies in the show. It was oh like this is like an article from England. Um, because you know, you, you put you you have like the, the things, so if your name's mentioned, you're like, all right, let's hope they didn't talk any shit. No, we're good. Um, but in this one, they're like, Oh, he shaved his beard, he must be dead. I'm like, no, no one's working for like six <laughs> months, everybody. Like this Like, is, have you heard the world shut down? Yeah, the yeah. world is done for a second. I shaved. You know, this beard comes it's like the Santa Claus. This doesn't take long. Um, and uh, uh, what was that in reference to? I am have this coffee is not kicked in, but I just you just the walked hat. Through. Where was the hat? The from? hat, yes. The hat. Okay, so I always like wearing. Um, this is the only ball cap that fits my head. It's the reason I wear it. It's it's because it fits my head. Normal caps they squeeze my brain. My man, um, look at that melon. Yeah. Uh, two XL flat fix. Yeah, flex I mean, fit. That'll, that'll yeah. Two XL. It'll still be a nice like firmness. This is like a big hat, so. I have this bowler that I usually wear, and I put different. I got it in Scotland, and then I wear the scarf I got in Scotland. But then I just get scarves and I just put it around my hat. And in this case, I was like, Josh, uh, uh, Eugene, Josh was like, "Hey, we're all gonna wear tuxedos." And I wasn't sure if he was pranking me, but I'm like, "Okay, we can do tuxedos." So. He says pranks in the same tone that he says reality. Yeah, it's you never <laughs> so know. You if never he's really joking. know if he's a joke or not. So I was like, I think he's serious this time. So I found a top hat. And then I had to find a scarf for this one, and I found like this like silk scarf in like a Bloomingdale's or something. It was like the day before in LA. I was with Callan, who played uh, Alden, and we're just walking around the mall, <laughs> like looking for a looking for a top hat and scarf. But I always, I don't know, the, I like you hats. You wore the top hat at the premiere too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the only time I that's the only time I've worn that. Normally it's. Normally yep. I wear like the bowler with like a different scarf, but yeah. this is the top hat. I yeah. went a little fancier. Yeah. Well, when you search up your name on Google, that's the first photo that pops up. Perfect. That's Perfect. amazing. <laughs> that's good. Cooper was sitting right behind me, and I kept thinking when he had the hat on, I was like, thank God he's sitting behind me. I can't see shit. Like, you know, like, the first photo that pops up when you see you, your, your hair is like in a big bun, I want to say, in the back. 
Huh. That, that's, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know that. Good. I was yeah. going to Google Fun my fact. stuff later, but now I feel like yeah. I don't need now to. I, yeah, now Got I don't need to ruin months. the algorithms yeah. anymore. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, my question is actually for both of you because a few years back, uh, Mick Foley came to Cornwall nice. yeah. uh, for like a meet for like a meetup, and uh, my question is which uh, WWE wrestler uh, have you guys met? <laughs> Kane. Um, oh, and and the um, Xavier Woods and. Uh, Biggie, and uh, why can't I think of the Kofi. Kofi? Yes, and he's a big he's a big Walking Dead fan. Kofi, <laughs> and they're they're all super cool. But even Kofi, it's funny. He's tall. He's really like it's so funny how big the wrestlers are because they look like they're short. Like especially the well, a New Day. Sorry, the New Day is like I have like their shirt. I was a big fan of the New Day because I played trombone and I was like, but I see Xavier. Um, uh, I see him like once a year at Dragon Con. We both just, we don't even go as guests sometimes and we just, we'll, like, we'll just meet up and then we're just like in costume or whatever. And then, so yeah, from the WWE. I haven't met Mick Foley though, that's cool. Yeah. I've seen a lot of wrestlers, but I am not really, I don't really know that world. So. Anymore. She was a massive <laughs> fan. She doesn't like talking about it. She was. I bury that past deep, <laughs> deep, deep down. But when they walk around with like muscles and stuff, I'm like, cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reason this uh, question popped into my head is because uh, I was remembering it and I remembered how I held this title too. So. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Is it heavier than other titles? Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I met this chick from um, America, American Warrior Ninja, and, oh, God, Jess. Oh, Jesse Je Graff? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesse Graff. She was awesome. She taught me how to do a real pull-up. Ah. Can you teach those me? Those are hard. Mm -hmm. Those are really hard, yeah. Yeah. Never the done trick one. is yeah. you got to use your chair. Oh, you just stand on the chair. You and stand on your chair, and you start lifting yourself up, and then slowly you start to drop the weight on the chair. So like if you're if you're using your toes, then you like lean a little bit forward, like to the point that like your knees are holding all the weight and then you pull up and then you move the chair and then it's full body weight. Yeah, because you never see that in the gym. It's just those really macho yeah, just people, guys, just like, you know, one arm yeah, in it. And you're like, I don't want to like, be do here. It, and I'm like, I can't even like, I can't even stretch my arms that high. Like, how do you start? <laughs> yeah. How do you Her? start? And she was just like, here, I got like an actual way. Because she would be across, she was across from me, literally in between like signing or picture pictures she go right back to the rack and she would just do pull-ups I'm like good lord like how does a, that like, she's a beast she's a crazy stunt she, person and like, she just and she just does it all day like when she starts getting cold she has a thing that she doesn't like feeling cold so she's just like oh, I'll out. just like go and she, and she just has like a rack just sitting there at her desk and like because people will also want to see her do her thing but just in between she'll just like just do pull-ups. I'm like, another round, Jesse, another round. <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. That, that was also cool. Yeah. She was someone I was like, she's like, one minute, no, it's okay. She's cool, no, no, no. I just good. kept staring at her. And eventually somebody, like her, her handler was like, do you want to come over? I'm like, no, I just want to stand here and just stare at her. <laughs> she's awesome. Yeah. Any All right, questions? yeah. From Any? Audience? Okay, so, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so out of all the characters that you've ever played, which ones were your favorite to play? Mm. Oh, I mean, I mean, for for me, I feel like you have are gonna have a lot harder time with that question because you have so many cool characters. I just finished Boardwalk Empire. If you guys haven't seen that, yeah, she's so good in that. You're so good in that. Thank you. I love that show. That's my. So that's much. that would be my character. Is daughter Maitland from Boardwalk? She was just phenomenal. She was like, she was. It was a. It was such a. Her life is so sad. Yeah. It's such a sad story. She was like the worst Stockholm syndrome ever. But, um, but meeting Jeffrey Wright and Steve Buscemi and Michael K. Williams and everybody. I mean, like, I remember the first day that I met Jeffrey Wright, and he was just. He's on the list for me as like, a, you know, someone that I'm in awe of. And um, and the first scene that I had with him that we actually had a scene scene together. He, I'm like, he has scars on his chest from um, like hair dye, like a hair lie that he has like these like burns across his chest. And we have this ritual, our characters have this ritual where I wipe his chest every morning. And um, 
And I remember when I had to touch his chest for the first time, my hand was shaking so bad. And he saw it, and I went to go wipe his chest, and he was like, ow. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm so sorry. And he's like, oh, just kidding. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and he was just like a normal dude. And, you know, he's just like, he's just, you know, like even in Westworld, in, uh, not Westworld. Yeah. yeah, in Westworld, like he just plays, he always just plays this like amazing genius. And you just, he's one of those guys or people that you just look at that you're like, I can't say something stupid because he's so much smarter than me. Um, but then like he still talks about, you know, going pee and poop and the normal stuff and I'm like oh you're just a human just like everybody else but That's you just scare me yeah. <laughs> good peas and poops good peas good. and poops everybody good, good. everybody's <laughs> balanced great yeah, yeah, yeah. No, daughter Maitland yeah Yeah. I mean, it was, but it was such I mean there's so many scenes where it's like it's because it was I mean, like it's just layer upon layer so it's like you have you have the over existing world then you have the world in which your character was like having to you know you were having to do all these shows and then but you were sort of falling for this guy while also uh, who created this I, this arch you know I feel like they were like arch nemeses of each other in mm -hmm. the show mm -hmm. and or, I mean they could say it's the you know it's the man of anything but the uh, just there was a lot going on there and then I, I think of someone like Jerry who's my who's my favorite character that I've, I've played obviously is because it's he just sticks out like he was designed for that for the world um, other people tried like finding a semblance of what life was like and they're trying to make it what it was and Jerry's like this is how it is I, and I just love that everyone else had to go into like a place they had to listen to a song or like go into like just stay dark for a while and Jerry's like nah he's good that was yesterday that's today's a new day like that like mm -hmm. I love that about my character but it was it slowly got used they, they sort of started switching him up for for me as things went on and I, I enjoyed that a lot more um, cause I can't act, uh, with my own <laughs> character. So it's a very, it's like, it's not true I'll at all. stick to me. It's, it's like, not true I play me great, but the, um, no, but the, just Jerry being like this really hopeful light. So I always got to go to set feeling like, like good, you know? Um, but there's still moments where like, I, <laughs> this is sticking out to me, but there's this one scene, like again, that same, in that same episode where we lose everything. And I just remember there's this one background like everyone's sad, the whole audience, or the whole, the whole, when we come back to the kingdomers, they're all sad, but there's this one person who's going like, like burying their head and doing this. And I, I just remember like, that is super distracting. And Melissa Carroll, she walks from like the corner of over there. She walks <laughs> all the way up to me, it's very slowly. And she goes, what the hell is that person doing? <laughs> <laughs> they can't show that, can they? And I'm like, mm, mm. this is my second year on the show, and she's and she's like, somebody should say something. And then she goes back. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at Kari. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm that somebody. <laughs> and so I, I go to the I go to our uh, one of our ads, and I'm like, hey, yeah, the, there's one person, and, and it's, it's only they're just very. It's, it's it's if you're trying to get this out of us, this person's like cracking us up. It's like anything you can do, and the guys, oh yeah, we can, yeah, we can move them. So he moves the entire section away. <laughs> so he's like in the back going like. But, but, well, no, he moved the wrong section. So the, the now it's more of the lady oh my God. going. <laughs> it was like on repeat. And I was like, well, that's, that's, all right, all right I tried. <laughs> all right, we got another question here. Yes. So I was just wondering, are there any movies that have like scared you? And if so, like, what are the movies I have? Ooh, favorite God. God. movie? Ooh. Movies that Children of the Corn. Oh, oh my classic. goodness, yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck, Those like, were nightmare. What? That was nightmare films. Like, now I, like, live on a farm. So I'm, like, driving. <laughs> I, like, drive by cornfields all the time. And I was, I was like, just drive. Just I will never be, live in the country. Kids yeah, in just there. keep driving. I was like, just keep driving. You kids just stay in that corn. Yeah. Oh. Welcome to Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I almost didn't come because of that. I was like, <laughs> I was like is Cornwall. there any correlation here? Uh, Tim Ugh. Curry, it when yes. like, I didn't, I didn't see it, but like, or, I mean, I saw it, but like, when I first saw it, I was really young, and I just remember seeing that face, oh, judgy or whatever, you know, and I'm like, oh my god. And then someone broke it down. Why clowns are scary is because they are. It's almost like a corpse in a sense. You have. It's, oh. It's the it's no. the paled skin, no. the the Dude, stop. lips. It's like a very like. <laughs> no. Please, please no, 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 no. And I'm like, oh, no. that's why they're terrible. Because it's like, 
It's like that. So that's so for people like, oh, I don't know why I'm afraid of clowns because they look like dead bodies laughing. I'm one you of know? those. I'm one yeah, of those. Yeah. Can't do clowns. Yeah, yeah. you're not wrong. Yeah, and if you didn't have a fear, I hope I gave you one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have like two fears in that. The C word is one of them. That's not. Zombieland did a great job with that, though. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. I liked how he conquered his fear yeah, to get no. the girl he liked. No, I can't do that. <laughs> no, no man is worth that. <laughs> All right, I think we are getting near the end. Is there any other questions that we have out there in the dear audience? We have tons of stories. It's just the yeah, right question yeah, that yeah, gets please. us there. <laughs> well put. Yeah. It's, it's um, what was one of the favorite scenes you filmed on The Walking Dead? Mm. That like Fa um, yeah, one of them. You, or either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, one. just one. <laughs> or just I mean, or one of them. I, like, I mean, uh, well, like, only, there's so many scenes, but the one that's like popping out because I talked about it earlier today was that cave scene. It's over. It's ruined. It's canceled. <laughs> the, um, uh, there's that cave scene, and I remember I was with, uh, well, I was with everybody like holding up this thing. I just one, I just thought it was comical. I'm like, yeah, this is a cave. Yeah, Jerry, no problem. He's just holding a cave. <laughs> it's just a cave. No B. You know, t yeah, no, get your conversations out. I'll be right here with this log on my back. Um, but I'm really, I'm really going for it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm lifting this thing that can't move anymore. You know, I mean, like, really, it can't, like, it's a big wooden log. I'm just, like, slamming up, and I'm screaming as uh, loudly as possible, and they keep throwing real dirt. And when I say real dirt, I don't mean, like, refined dirt. I mean, like, oh, there's the a patch. Ground. So I have, like, little pebbles, like, hitting me in the head and, like, I'm like, ah! like screaming. And uh, Lauren Ridloff, who is, is deaf, at the, end of the, at the end of the first take, she, like, you know, she signs to me and her, her, her interpreter is like, she can hear you. Like, she can hear you. And so that was that's awesome. So, well, I just got chills. That's cool. Yeah, that, so that was, that was crazy because we're in this cave. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, the cave was made, different parts, it was made out of foam, but then they poured concrete all over it. And it's, so a cave is nice and smooth. This is just rough. So everything you did, you kind of remembered because it was just scraping up everything, all of us. And, and, and Norman's like, yeah, this is like the real Walking Dead. It's like, this is what it used to be like. And I'm like, right? I'm like, yeah, right? It's right? like the weird, it's like, it's weird, like what right? it's like, you know? But it's, it's weird, like, right? but we were just all going for it. And he was just all in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Um, right? And he was <laughs> Doesn't that hurt, right? Yeah. Like, what it's do you like, think? It's like, like awesome. Cooper, and, like, hey, like, that was concrete, right? Yeah, it's like real concrete. Right? That's like, that's like yeah. crazy. And, um, and the, uh, uh, what you call it? We were all in it, you know, and so that was, uh, that, those were fun scenes. But yeah, the screaming, I just remember her going, like, her face was like, I can hear you. You know, I was like, oh. So I was like, was that too loud? <laughs> you know, was just, but yeah, so that, that sticks out. But then there's, you know, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff with Kari. I mean, those are, Kari is one of the most, I mean, he's my favorite person to act with because he and I both, like when we met, it was like, oh man, this is, we're going to have a ton of fun. Because we both get to those, we get really happy and then we can get really into it. And so we go, we share the wave together. Also, they're two voice actors. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, so yeah. their voices are just like these powerful beings. Like <laughs> when they just are combined, it's just like a, ah, like yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's like North such star. a star. Yeah. He's a very big influence on me. He was a big, uh, uh, he helped. Like, I remember I was like freaking out when I got the, got the part for, you know, for Aquaman. It was cool. At first he was like, yeah, I read for that. You know, I was like, Oh, dope. And then, but then the next thing was, I was like, hey, so how long should each line take? I was like, 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 like when your friend yesterday was like, yeah. just questions, like, don't worry about yeah. that kind of thing. But I was like, so nervous when I was about to do this cartoon, because it's like, they're giving me four hours to do, and you know, we had to break up the epi each episode by over a few days. And uh, it was just so much, uh, so much stuff. And, and he's like, dude, you got it. What no, you know what to do, you're fine. You know, I'm like, oh I, my God, I don't know. So <laughs> just, but he always, has been such a massive, uh, he's always been in my corner kind of person. He, like, Kari, yeah, so like, like the bond of Jerry and Ezekiel is like, is massive. And like I said, he married me and my wife, and it was like a, uh, after we do that movie theater episode, and uh, I was talking about that earlier today also. He's like, you know, we're in the middle of killing things. Like, yeah, so what we, uh, do you want to hear what I'm going to say tomorrow? I'm like, I mean, if you want to tell me, you know, like he was like, there's zero plan tomorrow. Are you sure this is how we want to do it? I'm like, yeah, zero plan. That's, that's good. Yeah. No plan. So, um, 
but yeah, just getting to bounce off him and then just talking about like when we just do voices and like stuff like that. It's always fun. And then we always sing, dance. There's always singing involved. Yeah, yeah we always. My, yeah. my favorite scene was probably the finale because I had yet to be on set with every character. Um, and we were all on set and we were all sitting out of this coffee shop. They actually got a coffee shop for us for, for like just uh, holding just because like there weren't a lot of places. And I'm a big coffee drinker, so I just very much appreciated that throughout the day, just liquid courage, you know? And, um, but then we would break out into like charades, which we really loved doing together. And we'd play games in the middle of the day. It was also super, super hot. And none of us really knew what we were doing. Like they just kept, they were like, we didn't really understand where the troopers were coming in, where the zombie yeah. horde was coming in. They were just like, it wasn't communicated well. So all of us were like, what's, where are you standing? What's happening? Yeah, I mean, we really... <laughs> and no one yeah. wanted to stand by, like, Melissa or Norman <laughs> or <laughs> Negan or Maggie because, like, you knew that you weren't going to... Like, you knew that you were just going to stay on camera, and which would mean that you would have to be, like, hanging out for the majority of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, everybody... Christian's so good at getting out of Christian the shot. is so good about getting out. Like, everybody else that was, like... Everybody else that had seniority, they were all escaping. So it just... It like left me and other newbies like Paula and other yeah, people that yeah. had to stay next to the characters. And I was like, shit, like I gotta be here all fucking day now. Like I was, I was next to Norman and I was like, God damn it. Like I just, I, and he was holding, uh, he's holding Judith. Judith yeah. So like all the cameras kept coming on us and I was like, oh, I gotta, everybody else is playing inside yeah. and I have to stand outside. It's just like, it was horrible, but it was just, I mean, it was, <laughs> we had the best time together and, being it, I mean, Kari was there, Seth was there, Dan was there, yep. Nadia was there, Eleanor, like everybody, everybody was on set. And we were just, the amount of, t and also like by the end of the day, you start getting slap happy, like you're just like delirious. And the it's very hard to hold a weapon and start laughing, like, cause it's just, you can't, you need to be serious. <laughs> like, you know, like there's like a walker in front of you and they get like, you know, I don't know, you just start, just, I cannot stand next to Eleanor. Oh. <laughs> just, I just can't stand next to her. Uh, I can't. She's just, she's really, she plays like such a sturdy character and I love her relationship with Magda, but she is like one of, she's surprised, she's British and she's just so witty that she'll just say these zingers that just get me. And I'll just like, I can't, once I start, I cannot stop. So I have, I have held up cameras for that. And I guess speaking of stopping, we've uh, gotten the signal here. So before we wrap this up, uh, one last quick question for both of you. Sure. What is, uh, we like to ask this at the end of our shows. Um, what are you thankful for and what are you looking forward oh, that's to? That's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, wow. I'm thankful for this moment. Oh, thank you. I'm thankful for you guys being able to come here today and welcoming us so much and getting to come to Montreal and um and i've never been here before and it, i'm gonna yeah. leave with a really good memory there's no kids in the corn so it's okay thank god you, you can, <laughs> god, god i will okay. come to cornwall again then they've been cleared it's good they, um, they grow up every, yeah every thankful for for this moment yeah no i i mean th that's the one cool thing about a lot of these conventions it's it's hard to remember i mean it, it really is to remember every name and every face but I do treat, like, every time I visit a place, it, it is a completely different personality. Mm -hmm. There really is. So, like, it's, it's just funny how everyone is so unique, but there is, like, a underlying, like, commonality that people in the same town have, um, which is, and this one's very warm. Like I said, it's a very earnest, very warm. Like, yeah. it's, it just feels like, and I, I don't know if it's just north, just the north in general, the north from the north but it's it's this it's this, it's this very welcoming and it feels like very it feels like very much like all of you have given me the food i've eaten so far <laughs> like that's so i get i get that vibe um but yeah i'm i mean it's i'm always going to be thankful for my mom because she's let me i mean, like other parents they try to like you know a single mom you know met my dad for the first time three years ago and you start to have uh the way you get shaped into things. And she's like, well, what do I know? Maybe, you know, you know, she's this little, you know, petite Jewish lady and I'm, you know, I'm still Samoan no matter what's gonna happen. And, and um, you know, if I had an idea or if I wanted to do a thing, she was just like, just don't hurt anybody. And, you know, 
you have to work. So like just knowing that even at the, <laughs> knowing at the beginning of, of all this, you know, of the whole career, knowing I was doing like construction, like handyman stuff from like 5 a.m. to like 2 to 3 p.m. And then from 4 p.m. to, you know, anywhere between 10 to midnight, you know, we're, we're filming stuff. So she, and I didn't feel like judged and like, so as, as an actor, you really, or as any kind of performer, you don't want to have any kind of doubt going into what you're doing. And so she's, she's she raised a very arrogant child who, um, who, who has like, I have very little doubts in what I do and, and everything. Um, and, and sometimes, but when I meet other actors, I meet someone like Dan Fogler, I'm like, that man has zero doubts about, so I'm like, I'm not that bad. He has like, but then you learn from that and it's, and sometimes your best choices, your best decisions are made without the, without fear, you know? And so I, I don't fear, I don't fear much except for inevit inevitability. So that's always a thing to be scared of, I guess, maybe, I don't know. I sort of embrace it after a while, but like um, just sort of, I'm grateful that in my, like the, in the way I was raised and grown, I, you know, I just, that, that part has, was like a thing I like about me is that I don't have that doubt and, and, and fear, yeah. Everybody, please put your hands together for Margo Bingham and Cooper Andrews. Thank you guys thank so, you so guys. much for being yeah, here. Thank you. Thanks for the amazing host. Give it up. Yes. <laughs>